Hello everybody, Daniels here. Let's continue where we left off last time by adding the Glassfish server to Eclipse. <laughs> if you don't see the servers tab, that's okay. We can go to File, New, Other, then you can search for Server, click on Server, Next, and here you can choose the server. So we want a Glassfish server and we're going to click Glassfish 4. Now, if we don't see Glassfish here, then you have to go back to Eclipse Marketplace and install, like I showed you in the last tutorial, uh, it's taking a while, I showed you in the last tutorial to install the Glassfish tools for Luna, for Eclipse Luna. Install those guys. Okay, Glassfish tools for Luna. <coughs> uh, okay, great. So assuming that you have them installed and you restarted Eclipse, huh? you also, there is also a need to restart Eclipse. Oops, not server, sorry, server. Sorry, server. There we go. I'm going to go back to that menu. I'm going to select Glassfish 4. And here, this should be, this is the Java development kit that we installed a few tutorials previously. And now we need to select where the server was extracted on our computer. We have to select the folder where we extracted Glassfish from the zip file on our computer. This is the server root. So I'm going to open the browse files. I'm going to go computer C. I extracted Glassfish to the Gfish4 folder, Gfish4. There we go. Inside it there is the Glassfish4 folder. You may you may think you, it may seem that that's the folder we need to select, but in fact we need to select one more folder inside it. We need to select this folder. It's called Glassfish. That's the one we need to select. So it's the Glassfish folder inside the Glassfish 4 folder. So I'm going to do OK. See, you notice the directory path. This part may be different on your computer, depends where you extracted Glassfish, but this part should be the same on your computer. The, this path should be the same regardless of where you extracted the Glassfish server on your computer. So this part could be different, but this part should be the same no matter where you put Glassfish on your computer. All right, let's click Next. Let's accept all the default configurations. Click Next again and Finish. That's it. How are we doing? Okay. Now, it Glassfish 4 was added to the servers tab. If you don't see this tab, what you can do is you can go to window and then reset perspective and then click OK. And you should be able now to have Eclipse reset the view. And you should be after the view is now reset to the original default view, you should be able to see the server tab server tab and you should be able to see the Glassfish 4 server under it. Okay, let's start the server. We don't have any applications deployed on it, but let's start it. You can click on the green button here or you can right click on the server and click start. <laughs> now it's starting. The console will show us the start progress. Unfortunately, it takes it takes uh, maybe, I think I would say about a minute to start. Let's wait for it to start. Still waiting. Okay, now when it says when Windows 
says that they want to allow this to access the internet or access your public networks. Say yes, allow access. There we go. And the Glassfish server, well, it's still starting. I think, well, maybe it already started. Let's see, looks like it started. And then to, you can go to the browser and go to localhost and type 8080. And there we go, you should see the Glassfish prompt screen. Um, if, if localhost does not work, maybe you can, um, type um you can try another way here it is 127 so we saw that we can go to the glassfish server by typing localhost 8080 that's it actually localhost 8080 but if that doesn't work you can also try to type 127.0.0.1 that's the same thing that's the address for the local host domain so that's the ip address that points to the local host domain or oh, the local or oh, actually the local host domain points to this ip address so when you type local host this ip address is getting resolved so if local host does not work you can type the ip address directly this one 127.0.0.1 and after the colon we have the port number the port number is 8080 and you should see that the glassfish is running one last thing you can also go instead of to port 8080 you can go to port 4848 either on localhost you can say either localhost or you can say the ip address directly here is set the ip address directly and the Glassfish Administration Console will start. How are we doing with time? Okay. <laughs> this takes, unfortunately, a little, little while, but okay, it looks like it's working. Uh, looks like it's good, looks like it's working. Um, the first time you start it, it, it kind of takes a while, but then it's but then it's fast, and there we go. Well, that's it for this tutorial. I guess to stop Glassfish, let's right click and click stop. There we go. After we click stop, if we try to go to uh, the server again, we won't be able to reach it. Unable to connect because there is no server running at this IP address on this port. Okay, so normally, again, you don't have to use 127.0.0.1, you can just use localhost. That's easier. The, the IP address is a backup in case the localhost domain, for some reason, does, does not work so well. Okay, this is it for this tutorial. Thank you very much. We'll continue next time.